Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in 2 Timothy. We're going to be starting chapter 3 this lesson. But before we begin our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord, Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. In the first uh, nine verses of chapter three, Paul here is warning Timothy about the coming apostasy. And Paul here now turns his attention and he wants to write th these next few words concerning the last days. Now, as I've said before, I believe that and, and many others also believe that the apostles, they thought that Jesus would return in their lifetime. They had no idea that it would take, you know, 2,000 more years and Jesus still hasn't come yet. They thought that he would come in their lifetime or if, if not in their lifetime, then shortly thereafter. So there are others in, in that you know, think that uh, the apostles believe that uh, it would take a long time. They have scriptures that they can use and uh, they that where Jesus is telling the, the disciples that it's it's not going to be a short time. You know, I it's going to be a while before I return. But I think that that uh, the apostles truly believe the way they wrote these letters uh, that they believed Jesus would come very soon. So he, Paul sets out to warn Timothy of what will be manifested in the hearts of people, in the hearts of mankind in the last days. Now, as we start here, verse one of chapter three, he says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. So Paul here starts this chapter and he says, this know also. Now, Paul just finished in chapter two, chapters one and two, he just finished warning Timothy uh, to be a vessel unto honor and to also flee youthful lusts and to stay away from silly and uneducated questions. And how also some people will be snared by the devil only to, uh, and their only hope is to repent and to acknowledge the word of God as the truth. Now, when people are snared by the devil, their, their, their only hope is to acknowledge the truth of the word of God and to repent, to give their hearts to Christ. And if they've already given their hearts to Christ and they're snared by the devil, they need, to, they need to repent and get back into the word of God. But there is something else that Paul warns Timothy, that Paul, he wants Timothy to know this thing. And it's about the deterioration of men's hearts in the last days. You may say, Pastor Mark, <laughs> we must be in the last days because... You know, there, I can see all around us, you know, men's hearts are deteriorating. And that's true. That's true. But whether these are the last days or whether there's still 500 more to go, I don't know. But we, we're, what Paul here writes in these next few verses describing the deterioration of men's hearts in the last days is, uh, is, is we need to understand this. So, he starts out and he says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And this Greek word for perilous is chalepos. And it means grievous or hard to deal with. Now, this Greek word uh, uh, chalepos is also seen in Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, and it, 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 this Greek word is translated there as exceeding fierce, exceeding fierce, 
and it and it's referring to the two people of the of the Gergeshines who were who were devil possessed. They were possessed by a devil. So this Greek word for perilous also can mean exceedingly fierce. Now remember the grievous and fierce times are because of men's hearts and it's not from it's not from outside forces what paul here is describing in, in the book of revelation we see that in the very last days uh, during the tribulation period the stars and the skies and the moons and 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 the god's going to god's going to use everything in the last in those days uh, to bring judgment upon the people He's going to use the earth and earthquakes and the sun and the moon and the stars and all these things. But what Paul here describes and is, is it's not from outside forces. The grievousness, the fierceness that's being spoken of here is not from outside forces, but it's from men's hearts. As these two devil-possessed people were hard to deal with, so also the people of the last days will be hard to deal with. Because you're going to see, you're, Paul is going to describe what's going on within men's hearts in the last days. And why it's, why Paul says perilous times. Times that are, men's hearts in the last days are going to be hard. And it's gonna and it's gonna be very difficult for for people to give their hearts to Christ for the Word of God to crack open that hard heart and uh, that grievous heart and to and and to humble themselves and to come to Christ. So Paul here is warning Timothy, but that word of the, this word of God is a warning for us also that if we believe we're in the last days. It's going to be more difficult when we preach the word of God, when we witness to people. You're going to see men's hearts are going to be turning evil. They're going to be turning very hard. So he says here in verse 2, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. Now, in he says here in uh, the first part, he says for the he gives a list. Paul gives a list of of these these sins, and he says here in verse two, for men shall be the first one is what lovers of their own selves. Now, this Greek word here is philautos, philautos, and it means to be fond of or to like yourself. It means to have an affection for oneself. Now, it's Paul gives a list of 19 sins in these verses. 19 sins. And you know, it's it's interesting. It's it's, it's I believe it's by divine will, God's will that this list of 19 sins which lead people astray begins with the one sin that is probably the foundation of all these other sins. And you know what it is? It's the, it's the sin of self-love. Paul mentions 19 sins in the last days, hardness of heart, and the first one, that that and if ultimately it's God who put this first, it's the sin of self love, and all these other sins that are mentioned here seem to have their seem to have a foundation in self love, self love. He says, "Men shall be lovers of their own selves, self love, which results in selfishness." will destroy your relationships with others and with God. When a Christian puts themselves first, how can they obey God when, when God says, thou shall have no other gods before me? 
right? How can we, how can a Christian who, who professes Christ truly love God when they put themselves first, when they have self love first? The very, listen, the very essence of Christianity is not to put self on the throne, but it's to die to self and to have Christ as our life. Every Christian should have these, ver listen, these next few verses, every Christian should have these verses memorized and striving for the reality of these verses in their life. The first one is Galatians 2.20. I am crucified. The Greek there is past perfect tense. I have been, listen, if you're a Christian, you have already been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's not I that lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, this is, this is what we need as Christians. It's not self-love. It's what I have been crucified with Christ. You have been crucified with Christ. You're already dead in Christ. You're already dead. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. If ye then be risen with Christ, what? Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth. Why? For you are dead. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. You are dead. Not self-love, not resurrecting yourself from the dead and putting yourself first. It's, it's you are dead. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Right? Listen, sin entered into mankind starting with Eve because Satan tempted her with what? What? What did Satan tempt her with? Selfishness. With self-enthronement. Satan tempted Eve with selfishness and self-enthronement. Genesis 3. Turn to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. For God does know, this is Satan speaking to Eve, for God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and she did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Listen. And they sewed fig leaves together, and they made themselves apron. Verse 5. What? In verse 5, for, for God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods. You'll be as gods. You'll know good and evil. In verse 5, I will put myself upon the throne. Right? I will decide what is good and what is evil. Sure, I, I eat the fruit. After I eat the fruit, I will still need God for some things, but not for everything. And this is what... Satan was tempting her with, you'll be as gods, you'll eat this fruit. But God knows that when you eat it, you'll be just like him and you'll know good and evil and you can make your own decisions for yourself. You won't need God anymore. In verse six, Eve may have thought that by eating the fruit, 
she would be helping God, that she would become mature and know some of the hidden secrets of God, of good and evil, and be able to grow into making her own decisions. Satan, listen, Satan had so tempted Eve that she may have thought that this was what God wanted. But in, listen, listen now, an unseen sin was hiding from her. She couldn't see it. There was a sin that was hiding from Eve and she couldn't see it. She was blind to it. Now watch, listen. Satan had blinded her. <laughs> Satan had blinded her to this unseen hidden sin. And when she ate the fruit, the sin was revealed. The sin was revealed to her and to Adam. It was hiding. She couldn't see it. Satan knew about it. And he wanted to get Eve. He wanted to get Eve to do this sin. But, but, but Eve couldn't see it. Adam couldn't see it. But when she ate of the fruit, that sin was revealed. You know what it was? It's the sin of disobedience. It blindsided both Eve and Adam. And when this sin of disobedience was revealed, it showed them the deception of Satan and the selfish desires of their own hearts. Now in verse 7, it says, The eyes of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and they made themselves aprons. In verse seven, now, now, after they sin, their eyes are open. And the first thing they see in their, what's the first thing they see in their sinful state? Ha, <laughs> they see self, right? Their eyes were open. What does it say? Their eyes were open and they knew they were naked. How did they know? Because when their eyes were open, they looked at themselves. That's what sin does. Sin causes us to be selfish. Sin causes us to focus our life on our, on our sinful, wicked heart. The desire for self to reign in their own heart is in every human being. And it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. And where do you think, listen, where do you think Adam and Eve got, got this desire for, this desire for self-enthronement from? They got it from, they got it from their father, their father's sinful nature. They got it from our father's sinful nature. The one who deceived us, Satan. In Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 14, we have the five I wills, right? The five I wills. And doesn't this last I will, when Satan, the, the very last I will that Satan pronounces, he says, I will be like the most high. I will be just like God himself. Doesn't that, doesn't that sound just like, just like when he says to Eve, then your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods, right? Sure, they, Adam and Eve, took upon themselves the very nature of the one who deceived them, Satan. And they took upon, and this is why Satan desired to be like the Most High and he was kicked out of heaven. Adam and Eve desired to be just like God because that's what they thought this fruit was going to give them. You know what? They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Selfishness gets us kicked out. <laughs> it really does. Selfishness gets us kicked out. Now, we can't, we're not going to lose our salvation, but it gets us kicked out from the presence of God. And we have to repent. We have to see our sin and repent and come back to God and be restored and humble ourselves. 
that it's not us. What? We are dead. We are dead and our life is hid with Christ and God. You are dead. As the love of money is the root of all evil, so the love of self is the beginning of all sins. The love of self is the beginning of all sins. And that's why this list of 19 sins that Paul is going to give to Timothy, the first one starts with what? Self-love. Men will be lovers of their own self. This does not mean that we neglect ourselves to the point where we get sick and entertain dangerous thoughts against ourselves. God has given us a body to take care of and to be a good steward of. But remember, God is always first in our hearts. God is always to be first. He's always to be, he's always to be the focal point of our hearts, not ourself. And this is how Satan distracted, tempted Eve. He got her focused on herself. Put yourself on your own throne. Take God off the throne and put yourself there. No, it's, it's, this is what men's hearts will be like. And you'll see in this list of 19 sins that Paul gives, if you think about it, it all goes back to self-love. All right, until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.